Welcome YouTube Stack Beast here. So in this video, we are going to learn about the JavaScript objects. Objects are one of the most important concept of a JavaScript because they can be used to store any kind of a data in the form of key value pairs. So let's get started. So you can just define the JavaScript object using any keyword like let, const or where depending upon your uses. So usually I prefer the const keyword. So let's just define the const and then give the object name. So I'll call it user and the JavaScript object starts with these curly braces. So every key value property goes inside these curly braces. So you can just start giving it key value pairs. So I'll define a one key as age and give it a value of something. You, you can use any data type here. For example, I'll give it a number here. And after that, you can define the another property like uh, I'll give it a name and you give some value to this like I'll give it stack. So this is a simple JavaScript object containing two properties. So you can access any of the properties or change its values or either use it using object name dot then accessing its key. So object dot age will give you 14 and object dot age equals and assigning it new value in this manner. You can just assign a new value to the user object. So let's see, let's just lock the user object to the console. So if I lock the user object to the console, you see a simple message here, age 14 and name stack. So if I want to use any particular property, I can use user dot any property. I'll use age here. So you see 14. And if I use age dot name, I'll see the stack here. So this is a simple JavaScript object. The JavaScript object can be very complicated as well. So you can also use the array inside the JavaScript objects. So I'll define a one more property called hobbies. And uh, now this hobbies will be actually an array. So you can just define an array with a random items like uh, I'll give it cricket. And then one more element called football. Uh, yeah, so Please ignore the typo mistakes there. So if now we use user.hobbies, we'll see that this is now our array. So if we see there are two array user.hobbies. So if you want to iterate over through the all the hobbies of a user, so we can use user.hobbies, then use the method we just discussed in the last video called for each and uh, using a callback function here, which will basically pass a hobby at each time and then use the body of the function. So in this body, we just want to print the hobby to the console and let's save the program and see, you see cricket and football. So now let's just make this object a bit more complicated where this objects uh, here, hobby is basically a string now. So we'll just change this object to a object itself. Please don't get confused here. So we can, we are just storing the objects of an array, basically arrays of an object. So this object here will contain two properties called hobby name. I'll give it, now I will give it uh, some hobby name, for example, again, a cricket, I'll call it. And now uh, I'll, I can just assign a one more property to this object, which is inside an array called P. P refers to the priority and gives some value like, uh, I like four out of 10 scale. I like the four cricket. And uh, now just change this football to the same structure as well. So although we can store like different kind of structure in arrays, but uh, usually we prefer the same kind of things. So hobby name is cricket, priority is four. And uh, another value we can take is like, uh, again, I'll, I'll use the same key. Hobby name is now my football. Uh, this return is getting each time is my football. And now the priority is uh, priority, I'll, I'll, I'll make it less. So two is my priority. So if we save it now and execute the program, so you see during the for each loop, now it's an object here. So this object can also uh, give us access to a single property as well. For example, like if I use hobby.p, so this will give me the priority of hobby. You see four and two are the priority of the hobbies. So JavaScript objects are not only limited to arrays or a kind of nested structures um, but they can also store the functions as well so you can just define a one another property here with some function like uh, say hello and uh, this will now be a function so you can just create an arrow function here with the same syntax uh, and then use a uh, comma at the end just remember that after the each property you need to specify the comma and, and you can do pretty much everything in this body so let's just uh, some message to the console saying hello 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 here and save it and uh, okay 
So let's just remove the previous code and now log uh, a message uh, from this uh, say hello. So we don't need to use a log even here. So I'll just use user dot uh, say hello. Yeah, I'll just call that matter. If I save it, you see hello is being printed to the console, right? So in this way, you can use the JavaScript object. So JavaScript object can also get the properties of these members here. So if you want to use any of the properties inside these functions, so you can directly refer to the user object and uh, just access any property like user dot age basically and i'll call it age and save the program i'll see of oh, age is foreign cool so in this way you can just nest any javascript properties uh, and uh, yeah you can store any kind of a data so you can just play around with the javascript objects uh, and if you have any issue please uh, do ask me in the comments uh, and if you want to know more about the objects as well uh, just know let me know in the comments and if you have not subscribed to my channel yet please do subscribe and share the videos as well if you find them useful thank you for watching and see you soon